the NCAA, death to the NCAA could be coming. We saw this uh, pop up um, l- late last night and then earlier this morning, the stories started to flood in. The SEC and the Big Ten are really the ones leading the charge on kind of reshaping how college sports are going to be mm-hmm. played. We already knew that through conference realignment. But right now we heard Jim Harbaugh, remember last year, he, he kept saying it, I think like three or four times, that revenue sharing should be a part of college football. Players should get a piece of the revenues that are coming in. Well, uh, there is a proposal there that they are calling the modern mo- model where they would n- not only share the revenue with their players, but help the NCAA get out of lawsuits that they are currently facing. NCAA versus House Eddie House uh, is the center of a class action lawsuit against the NCAA that is set for trial in January of next year. And basically what they're looking for is they want their piece of the action for over 7,000 student athletes that could get money based off their name, image, and likeness over decades of the NCAA, uh, NCAA's existence. Oops. Um, if that does go to trial and uh, they do win, which many people do expect them to win, the NCAA, there's reports out there that says that the NCAA could be on the hook for $4.2 billion. $4.2 mm-hmm. billion. Yeah, that's what happens when you F around and exploit workers for decades. Yeah, that that's a big issue that they could have. And look, the NCAA gets money hand over fist every year, but they are a party planning committee that spends a lot of money on every other sport. You think of every NCAA championship across every single level, right? Division one, division two, II, division three, men's and women's sports alike. All of the money that comes in, it goes out very quickly. And so $4.2 billion dollars. A year, sure, that does come in. But the NCAA, in order to sustain all the other sports, that's going to be impossible. And the NCAA could cease to exist if if NCAA versus the House versus House goes against the NCAA. The thing about this is, uh, and I, I, with respect to what you're saying, I totally understand what you're saying as far as how they use their revenue. I would venture to guess that if you get to the books, there's a lot of waste in there. And there's a lot of fat, and there's a lot of people who got very rich off the back of these players. And absolutely, that's that's where I think the judge is going to go. Welp, better get some private equity then. Well, it'd be a, a jury to do it. Well, it was, it was, and look, the the NCAA would just fold. The NCAA would just fold yeah. and just be like, which, ah, which is what we I have no other option. And look. Everybody says the NCAA is corrupt and they, they're they poorly run. Those things are true. Mm-hmm. But you rip that away, every other sport outside of football and basketball gets ripped to the studs and a lot of them cease to exist. The, number one, I don't want to see that. But I think it might require, I think where we're at might require the NCAA going away. Or this version of the NCAA as we know it. As in, they no longer touch anything else. And the only thing that they handle is the money set aside by those institutions yep. that make the money, i.e. football and men's basketball. And if women's basketball can, keeps growing and that becomes a revenue generator over the next decade or so, them as well. But the only thing they do is they party plan. They do. They don't, they don't manage anything. They don't get payouts. They don't get commissioners that make tens of millions of dollars. That stuff goes away. The, the, the corporate money laundering that the NCAA firm basically was for 40 years ceases to exist in every facet. Yeah. And look, uh, the conferences, are all, they're all separate. And that's what it may come down to is that every conference has to operate on its own for if the NCAA does lose this, but what the modern model that the big 10 and SEC are are spearheading right now is to try and get out ahead of it and say, Hey, these old days are gone. And this is all we can do moving forward is 
we can be better moving forward. And what they're saying is that they're looking at 15 to $20 million per school that would is what they're looking at right now to be part of the revenue share. And the, that's a big chunk of change for a lot change for a lot of universities. Like you said, though, I think what it'll force teams to do is or universities to do is spend their money more wisely mm -hmm. and, and trim the fat on whether it's conference commissioners or other sports, if we're being quite honest. And that's what I don't want to see. I, I, I want to see if if the the jury here finds that. And I, I think they will. I thought I think they will find in favor of the plaintiff here. I, I genuinely do, because the evidence we all know is overwhelming and astounding against the NCAA. It, it just is, especially with the way legislation has had over the past 36 months. Yeah, it, but it will be interesting to see kind of legally how it, hold, how it holds up to how much the NCAA is on the hook for mm -hmm. because of the fact that NIL laws and rules didn't exist mm -hmm. before a handful of years ago. So you're trying to go 40 years ago, we were operating under a, a, a completely different set of rules and now you want to hold us accountable because things have changed now and that that's going to be the hard part the legality of that is that's the thing is and it this, doesn't make what the ncaa did right and that's the thing is everybody knows that what the ncaa was doing was protecting their own ass yeah that and to For generate sure. their own money and and in, in in sense what that because this is an antitrust case it can go back retroactively and that's why they could have a settlement that pays out those those past players there are a lot of uh, sports lawyers and, and corporate lawyers that do say that the NCAA is up against it right They're, now. They, there's just not a way out. And this will be really interesting to see if they can get the lawyers to say, all right, you guys moving forward, you guys have done enough. We're not going to completely cripple the NCAA and make it an entity that cannot see or that cannot exist anymore. You guys are going to have to pay your penance, but it won't be $4.2 billion. I think it could be a number that big, Ooh. but it's paid out over decades. Yeah. It yeah. gets put into a trust and managed in that fast. Well, I think this, this is going to be interesting. This, this is, is a like, pivot point. This is like uh, a legal ruling where you, you life with parole. This is kind of what this is. It's like you get to live, but the way that you live and how it, how you live is going to be vastly different and, it sh and incredibly regulated. It should be. Yes. Because the way the NCAA operated with their arbitrary, you know, make it up as you go rulings and in, in hammering some schools but letting other ones skate, sitting there in, in whatever you picked and choose Looking at to you, Mark smash Emmert. a school for. But, you know, Emmert gets all of the hate. The university presidents are the ones to blame. Mark Emmert is a figurehead because every one of those, like, if it, they have, like, all of the their different subcommittees, right? Mm -hmm. And it, when you have the rules committee that's out there that's handing down punishments to universities, the people sitting on those are not Mark Emmert. It's university presidents, university athletic directors, conference commissioners. Those are the ones. So, like, everything that the NCAA made itself into was made into by university presidents which are and people it, that have no idea about athletics it's across division three all the way up to division one mm -hmm. so like you quite literally would have a case where a student athlete took some money and you had division three or division two presidents ad's admins that are ruling on a life they don't know about even if they are in athletics, like it's a completely different world being in the FBS as opposed to D2 or D3. Yes. And they've changed a lot of the way that that these infractions committees and rules committees have operated over the last handful of years. And just like Larry Scott, just like George Klyovkov, Mark Emmert does deserve a bunch of the blame because he couldn't get everybody on the same page. But just as the Pac-12 was an S show because of the university presidents, so is the NCAA here. And that's the hard me. part. As much as you hate the Lakers, I hate Mark Emmert. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is great from the Vancouver Ford text line. The irony of the NCAA being punished retro retroactively would be beautiful because it's exactly what they did to those schools for years. Yes. Like vacating wins. Yep. What? It does nothing. What? It does nothing. What are we, we doing? Know. 
We and but that's the only power that they have now is to vacate their wins because they control record. Books. Take that away too. <laughs> Take that away, too. That's the dumbest penalty Just rip everything. Like, leave them just standing there in their underwear and go. Go full Game of Thrones. Shame shame march them through the square. You guys remember when Louisville didn't win the national title? Yeah. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Or USC didn't win a national title? They didn't. Or, or, I don't know, a Heisman Trophy? (laughs) God. Well, that's the Heisman trustee you could yes. be upset at, too. Yes. It, yeah. The, did, real quick. Did you see the video they got it back of now, though. Reggie walking into the Heisman Trust building and them all applauding and cheering? Yes. Yeah. Welcome back. You did this. You freaking monsters. Yeah. They hey, did. we're all trying to find the guy that did this. I was just, I was so <laughs> livid when I saw no, that. No. I was like, are you kidding me right now? No. You sit there quietly with your head between your legs. While he walks around and laughs at you, you old dumb people. Between the legs, is that where the head was at? Yes, I was. <laughs> I was being nice. <laughs> so they just should. They should have booed him. No, they should have booed just him. Just shut up in. and put your head down. Boo! You don't deserve this trophy. <laughs> no business. No business celebrating and welcoming him back. God, why? You were the ones who did it. <laughs> Reinstated it. Good God. Yeah. I mean, some of those people may be dead that took it away from him. Probably. It's like, it's like the judge standing outside a jail cell for a, a wrongly convicted felon. Hey, really happy for you, bud. Great job. Great those, job today. Those dead ones that OJ killed them, too? Yeah. <laughs> the evidence was against him. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> the glove didn't fit. So dumb. <laughs> Absolutely hate it. The video made me viscerally angry. Uh, that's not good. It, you know what? It's never going to change. Archie Griffin, no longer the two-time Heisman Trophy winner. Reggie Bush got it twice. Mm. There you go. <laughs> he's he's got it twice. People don't wrong. forget. He won it. Took it away. Also, the only one got it back. only one to ever get it twenty years apart. That's right. That's right. Super senior. That COVID Bush ain't got is. nothing on this. See, it would have been great if Reggie Bush just walked into that ceremony and just went. I got a lot of problems with you people. <laughs> <laughs> Airing of grievances, just going all festivus on him. I would have supported every last second of it. No oh, man. To shame Mark Emmert isn't here to tell him to go to hell. Yeah. You, you, really? <laughs> he died? <laughs> no, yeah. I mean in, in the room. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's here. And then show up at his hater's funeral. Yikes. Tell me how you really feel, Danny. Give me about 30 seconds and I will. I think we already heard. I think <laughs> you made it pretty clear <laughs> where you stand on this Reggie Bush situation. You have done that.